For our first video in section 3.9, we are going to take a look at tangent line approximation and differentials. The idea here is that we can use a tangent line to approximate the value of a function for a certain neighborhood within an x value. So again, we're saying within a, some distance of a given x value, which you'll find we're going to end up calling delta x, which of course just means change in x or dx. So we're talking about within a certain distance of an x value, um, we can approximate the y value using the tangent line. So for instance, let's look at the graph of f of x equals radical x. That's this function right here. I've already graphed it for you. Now we can see at the tangent line at x equals four, so that's the x value that we're worried about, we can see that both the function itself, which is the black line, and the tangent line have a y value of two. Both of the y values are the same. Now, what if we looked at y values at 4.1? So remember when we said a neighborhood within an x value? So essentially we're saying that delta x or dx is equal to 0.1. So we're saying within 0.1, we think in that little neighborhood that our values for y or f of x and the value for the tangent line are going to be approximately equal. So let's take a look. Here is a graph and I'll go over the math part over here in just a minute, but here is a graph that shows you, and it's kind of hard to see the numbers here, but this is x equals four and this is x equals 4.1. And you can see if you squint, that the green point and the black point look almost the same. And that is even zoomed in. They look almost exactly the same. Now, if I zoom way, way, way in, you can see that they are not in fact the exact same point, but that the value on the black line, the original function, this value is 2.0248 four, five, six, seven, three. And that this point, the y value is 2.025. Now those values are almost identical. And so that's why we can use a tangent line approximation. So we've done a lot without doing a lot yet, but this is the idea behind what we're going to spend our time on is that we're going to be looking at the differentials. Let's talk now about differentials. So delta x is called the differential of x, or the change in x, and is denoted d of x. Delta y is called the differential of y and is denoted dy. So this part gets a little bit confusing because we've got delta x, dx, delta y, dy, and delta x and dx are always going to be the same thing. We're always going to use the same change in x and what we're going to do is we're going to look at the differences in the y values. So dy represents the distance of, or the distance changes of y on the tangent line. So if you think back to that picture we just looked at and we had the green tangent line, we're talking about the distance or the changes from x equals four and y equals two to x equals 4.1 and y equals 2.025. Delta y represents the distance changes of y in the graph of the function. So that's the original function, which was that 2.0, uh, 2.48, and so forth. So it's important to note, again, that delta x and dx are going to be the exact same thing, but delta y is going to be found by taking f prime of x d of x, and it's going to approximate delta y. So delta y, which changes, which represents the graph of the function, is going to be estimated using the differential dy. So before we put all of this together, let's just practice finding the differential of y. For our first one, we have y equals x to the fourth. So 
obviously differentials have to do with derivatives. So if I'm trying to find dy dx, I would take 4x cubed. So how do I find the differential, which is dy? Well, really, I'm just popping that dx. If you think about multiplying each side by dx, I have 4x cubed dx. That is my differential. Let's try this one. dy dx is equal to 3x squared minus 3. And therefore, dy is equal to 3x squared minus 3 dx. That is finding a differential. Now we want to take a look at evaluating differentials using given values. So we're kind of going to the next step here. On the last step, we found the differential. If you'll recall, this one was y equals 4x cubed dx. And this was, I'm sorry, dy. And this was dy equals 3x squared minus 3. And then dx. And that was finding the differentials. And now we want to evaluate it using given values of x and dx. So before we do this, because the math here is super simple, before we do this, keep in mind, when we evaluate a differential, we're finding dy. And dy is going to approximate delta y. So that's the goal here is we're trying to approximate delta y, which is the actual change in y on the actual graph. dy is just the change in the derivative graph. So let's go ahead and evaluate. Evaluating is just as easy as it looks. We're going to replace x with 2. We're going to replace dx with 1 fourth. We're going to find that dy at that point is 8 because obviously 4 and 1 fourth would cancel to 1. 2 to the third is 8. For my next question, dy is 3 times 3 squared minus 3. That whole thing is multiplied by 0 0.01, so those parentheses are important. And I get 3 times 3 times 3, or 27 minus 3, which is 24, times 0 0.01, so dy is 0 0.24. Now that we know more than we did a few minutes ago, let's go back to our first example. We had f of x is equal to radical x, and we were using that at the point x equals 4, and we were using delta x as point 1. So recall, because we used x at 4, and then we said, okay, now let's look at x at 4.1. So 4.1 minus 4 gave us 0.1. That's our delta x, which is the same, as you'll recall, as dx. Now, what we just finished doing was finding a differential and then evaluating at a certain x and delta x value. So let's do that here. Let's find dy using our function. And remember, dy would be, this is really just x to the 1 half. So that would be 1 half x to the negative 1 half dx. Let's now plug in our value for x and for dx. So we have 1 half, and then x to the negative 1 half means put x to the 1 half in the denominator. So I'm taking the square root of x, which is 4 and then times dx, which is 0.1. And the square root of 4 is 2, so I have 1 over 2 times 2, which is 1 fourth, or 0.25, times 0.1, which is 0 0.025. Now, you might be looking at our recall section and saying, uh, we don't have a 0 0.025. But here's how this is calculated. dy gives us the change from 4. Remember, that's where we started. So if you'll recall, f of 4 was 2. And so it's saying, just as we found, um, sorry, delta x or dx by taking 4.1 minus 4 to get 0.1, now we're going to say, in order to find dy, we would have taken... Um, 2, uh, sorry, 2.025 minus 2. 
which gave us 0 0.025. That's the dy. It's the change in y value on our tangent line from, from here to here. So from the green point, or I'm sorry, the, yeah, the red point to the green point up here, I don't know if you can tell the difference between the green and black, but that is a difference of 0 0.025. Now, we know um, in order to then find delta y, delta y is going to be the change in y of the actual function. So how can I do that? How can I find the change in y of the actual function? Well, delta y is going to be f of x plus delta x minus f of x. So just as we did here, we did the um, new point minus the original point. That's what I'm going to do here. So this is going to be f of 4 plus point zero of plus point 0.1, so 4.1 minus f of 4. So that means take the square root of 4.1 and subtract the square root of 4, which is about 2.0248 Subtract 2. So delta y is 0 0.0248573. So the main point here is that we can see that these two values are very, very close. So within the neighborhood of 0.1 on our x values, within a change of 0.1 on our x, we have a very, very small change between the changes in the y values. I want to do one last example where we're essentially putting together the most important parts. So we spent some time looking at the actual value and then we looked at differentials and approximating with differentials and how far apart are the two and so forth. I want to give you an actual problem where you might actually use differentials. So if I wanted to say approximate 1.99 to the third. Now, if I had a calculator, I would obviously just take 1.99 to the third and find 7.880599, and I'd be done. But they're asking me to use differentials to approximate this. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write this as y equals x to the third, because that's what's happening is I'm taking a value to the third. A value that is very, very close to 1.99 is 2. How close is it to 1.99? Well, it's 2 minus 1.99, which is 0 0.01. So that's delta x or dx. And that's how this is going to work. So pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to say dy is equal to 3x squared dx. I'm going to plug in the values of 2 and 0 0.01. I'm going to find 3 times 2 squared, which is 12. I'm going to take it times 0 0.01, and I'm going to get 0 0.12, 12 one hundredths. Now, obviously, that's not my solution. That's not my approximation of 1.99 to the third. What I have found is the difference from if I were to just plug in f of 2. So what is f of 2? Well, 2 to the third is 8. So here, just as I took 2 minus 1.99, if I take 8 minus the real answer, I should get 0.12, which obviously that means I can just take 8 minus 0.12 to get 7.88. That is my approximation. Notice that's a pretty darn good approximation. Now this is one method. I'm going to show you another method. It's more commonly taught if you're looking at other YouTube videos. Um, the way in the book is like this, but let's also look at another way. So we talked before about having a tangent line 
and the value at the tangent line, but we never took the time to actually find the equation of a tangent line. So let's do it that way so that you understand how that might work. To find the equation of a tangent line, I'm just going to use point slope form and I'm going to use M with F prime of X, right? Because that's the slope of the tangent line. So if my equation is y equals x cubed, then f prime of x is 3x squared. And at the point x equals 2, f prime of 2 is 3 times 2 squared, or 12. So I have y minus, and then y1, if you'll recall, when I plugged in 2, I got 8, right? So this is y minus 8 is equal to 12 and then x minus 2. So let's start there. y minus 8, so I get y minus 8 is equal to 12x minus 24, and then y equals, I'm going to add the 8, 12x minus 16. This is the equation of the tangent line at x equals 2. So you might be saying, that didn't do anything for me, because now what? Well, now I can find y of, or f of x, of 1.99. Okay, now how can I do that in my head without a calculator? Well, think about 1.99 as 2 minus 0 0.01. So let's take 12 times 2 minus 0 0.01 and then minus 16. Again, we're trying to do all of this without a calculator, which is the point. So, and if this side confuses you, don't worry about it. This is just um, y of 1.99. So 12 times 2 is 24. 12 times 0 0.01 is 0 0.12 and then minus 16. 24 minus 16 is 8, so 8 minus 0 0.12, which is 7.88. So notice I also got 7.88, which is the same solution I got before. Um, this advantage is that I don't have to remember to, you know, take the 8 into account because it's already taken into account um, with the equation of my tangent line. I don't care which way you do it because obviously both ways are mathematically sound. Whenever we talk about estimating things, there's always some kind of error involved. So our next video is going to talk about error with differentials.